Hello and welcome to my channel. Today's video is going to be how I created this model leech field in FreeCAD. I've chosen this as one, it was a it was requested, but I'm guessing the, the need for the quest request has far passed as it was quite some time ago, and I apologize for that. Um, but uh, this demonstrates a couple of good principles is one uh, in the part workbench, how to do a sweep. So the way I've created these are with two sketches and a sweep. And I also want to show how to make a thick solid, and that's for the boxes, and that's actually how, to, how I made these into pipes. And I'll finally, I'll show you how I made, um, how I put the holes in this pipe. So we're going to be demonstrating a, a sweep and a thick solid on all of these, on most, I think all of these, yeah. So uh, with that in mind, let's get started. So to get started, we'll take a look at the tank. And as always, I have a, of a parts pile. And then I have an assembly. So I'll hide my assembly and we'll just take a look at the parts. So I'll hide everything but the tank and you'll see that it's just a box with two holes. So I'm not saying that this is an accurate model of a septic tank, but it should serve to uh, work well for modeling and planning purposes just to get an idea of what you might want to do. Um, so how I made this was with a, uh, a, a you know, extruded sketch, a thickness and a pocket. And um, so let's do that in our, in a new document. I have a new document here, so let's start with a body and a sketch. We're going to have the sketch on the X Y plane, and it will be um, it will just be an eight by eight square. So that's you know simple enough. So I'm going to center it by picking the, these two end dots, and then the center dots points, and then then use the symmetry, and that'll center our square. And then I'm going to measure it, create the measurement by uh, doing a, a vertical constraint of eight feet. And then I'll do a horizontal constraint of eight feet as well once I can get to there. So there's our horizontal constraint and let's make that eight feet. So now let's center our drawing again. And that's all we need for our for the sketch. So let's close this and let's let's use the magnifiers to bring it into view. And then we're gonna pad that sketch using the pad tool. And we're gonna make it an eight foot pad as well. So it's an eight by eight by eight box. And that's all we need for the box. But now I'm gonna select the pad uh, to make the box. I'm gonna select the pad, a pad by selecting this face and that'll tell the pad, the uh, thickness tool where, where, it want, where you want the hole. So you see, we've got it right there and let's make it, um, we'll make it a uh, eighth, eighth inch. I don't know. I don't know what that would, would what the thickness would be on that, but we'll make it an eighth inch, eighth inch thick. Let's make it a 16th just, or. A quarter so we can see it. So I have no idea what that would be in real life, but this will work for us. So you see that's our, that creates our, um, our thickness. And sometimes when, when something isn't uh, calculating, just open it and close it, then it'll recalculate. So now we want to add a through pipe. So for the inlet and the outlet, and to do that, we're going to add a, another sketch. So with the body select, with the body activated, and you can tell by the blue there, I'm going to click sketch and we'll just, uh, Actually, let's select a face first and then do the sketch. It'll be a little bit easier. Um, there is recommendations that you don't do that, but for this sake, it works out okay because it's not a complex model. So I'm gonna attach the, uh, this make a circle and attach it to the, to the center axis. And then I'm gonna make it six feet from, from the bottom of the box. And that'll give us a, a two foot offset from, from the top of the box, which seems reasonable. <laughs> and then we're gonna make the pipe a six inch diameter. So I'll give it a three foot radius or a three inch radius, sorry, six, six inch diameter, did I say? And that's it for the sketch. And now all we're gonna do is we're gonna create a pocket and it's gonna go through the whole thing. And that's our, that's our septic uh, tank done. And let's name it tank. <laughs> And let's move on to the distribution box. So with our septic tank model complete, let's take a look at the, uh, the distribution box. We're gonna do that next. So in my parts group here, I'm gonna hide the tank and I'm gonna show the distribution box. So you see, this is the same sort of thing, but just with holes on the side. And so let's make this uh, go on to our model and make this. So let's hide the tank and let's add a body for the distro box. And we'll do a sketch also on the XY plane. So we're starting from the ground up sort of. And we're gonna make a two foot by one foot rectangle. So it's gonna be two foot on the horizontal. 
and it'll be one foot on the vertical. And that's just uh, by my choice. So the orientation works for my model. That's, you know, and these sizes are not anything, uh, anything real. They're just arbitrary that I picked. So then to center this, I'm going to do the same thing I did before by picking the, let's get that uh, face on. Oops. I'm going to pick the uh, diagonal points and we're going to use symmetry and then the center point and that's to get our symmetry so we can close this and now let's use our magnifying tool to get that in where we can see it and then we'll it's, um, we'll pad it by one foot so that's the basic shape of our distro box and now let's do a uh, thickness and you see it's done the same thing because I select the top face it made that the opening and now we're going to make we're going to make uh, the thickness one one inch, so it's visible. So it's very so the edge is very visible. And so uh, now I want to add three holes here, and they're going to be pocketed through the whole thing, and one hole here that's pocketed through the whole thing. So let's start with let's start with the side hole, and I'm going to add a face to that, and then we're going to add a circle. We'll uh, constrain the circle to that line. And then we'll make the radius of the circle three inches. So that gives us a six inch opening, just like, and then the final thing we'll do is, uh, let's see, let's make this, uh, we'll just center the, this, so we'll make that six inches. So it'll be centered in the, uh, in the box. And then we need to make this a pocket. So I'm gonna pocket it, and we're gonna go through all. So we have both sides. Now we'll do the, the three on the face. And again, I'm gonna use a sketch for that. And we're going to need three, three circles. And um, no, I was going to, I was thinking I'd do an array. So now I'm going to pre-select that line so it's automatically anchored, just like that. And I'm not going to. And then we're going to align them up horizontally by selecting the center points, and select the uh, horizontal constraints. So now they're lined up. Now let's take all three circles and give them a radius. We do want to share it, so click yes and we're gonna make the radius three inches. So that makes a six, six inch circle. So finally, we're just gonna create, we're gonna create a measurement here and we're gonna make it seven inches from the center. I think it sounds good. So I'm just sort of freewheeling here. And then to get the other side the same without adding a, um, without cluttering it up with measurements, I'm gonna select the symmetry. So you get the same, you get the distance, but you only have one measured, so you're not as cluttered. So now I'm gonna uh, pocket that. And also we're gonna do through all. So that's our distro box. And so now we wanna make the, the uh, distro covers. And I think I did do that with uh, cylinders. So let's take a look. So to add the cap, I'm actually just gonna copy it in from the other one, because I, I don't have the language ready yet to show you how I did this but I'll just sort of show you. So it's two additive cylinders and then a subtractive cylinder. And what that makes up is you have this additive and then the lip as an additive and then a subtractive from the middle. So it's not terribly difficult at all, but uh, the GUI is a little bit weird to me. So I have to develop a language for it. Um, so with those done and added, and I, I'll be uploading this model somewhere. It'll be in the description. Let's start with a pipe and we'll start with the inlet pipe. So this is our inlet pipe um, and it's done in the part design workbench and that's in an effort to teach how to do a sweep. So for the pipe, I have two sketches. One is the, is the sweep tool, let's call it. Um, and then this is the sweep path. So, and then I uh, sweep it and then I add thickness and I'll show you how to do all of these. So we'll start out with the sweep path. Um, so let's do that in our new model. So to create the inlet pipe, let's hide our existing stuff here and we're gonna start a new body and a new sketch. And we're gonna do that in the XZ plane, or no, I wanna do this, yeah, XZ plane. And let's zoom out a little bit. And we're gonna start out by adding a horizontal uh, line and this is gonna be our eight foot pipe run. So I'm gonna give that a eight foot length. And then we'll set the zoom in to that. So now I want to give it a one foot radius uh, bend. So it's going to be a 90 degree bend. So I'll 
let the let's see if I can get the tool to select. Sometimes it's finicky. And select. So I don't think I got that one there. Oops. Okay, and we're gonna make this so we'll make this a one foot radius. And then we'll connect these points with the coincident tool. And now I'm gonna give it a two feet extension here and that's gonna, that's what's gonna end up going to the tank. So I right click to get rid of this the uh, current tool. So we're gonna give that a vertical of two feet. And let's coincident these vertex, vertexes here. Okay, so that's gonna be our sweep path. So let's just close that. And now let's get that into view. And now let's add our sweep, um, our sweep profile. Sort of like a sweep tool. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add that to the ZY uh, or YZ plane so it's oriented correctly to, to begin with and that just helps with, with drawing it. So I'm gonna let that center on the origin of the sketch and we're gonna give that a three inch radius so that it's a six inch diameter just like everything else. And these are you know somewhat arbitrary. So now the trick is to get this at that vertex. And sometimes this works and sometimes it doesn't. So I don't know if it's a flaw or I'm using it incorrectly. But what I'm gonna do is I'm going to go into the map mode. I'm gonna select the ellipsis. And you see how it says X, Y plane here. Um, I'm going to select this vertex instead. Let's zoom it up on this so we can see it. Select that vertex. And you see that it's moved the profile to the end of that line. And the reason, and translate origin. If it doesn't work the first time and it picks something else, uh, I would just stop and start over again. So we'll click OK and now we'll create a sweep. So I'll select the profile, select sweep, and we're gonna do add edge. Now some people say, have said that you can double click this, but it doesn't seem to work for me. So if I double click the whole thing, let's try it. Nope. But it does work if I do one at a time. Add edge, click there. So that's our whole pipe, and now we want to do now we want to do the thickness. So to add thickness, uh, I'm going to start out by adding selecting this face and collect uh, select thickness. We'll we'll set let's set this to one sixteenth inch, and we'll set this to pipe. Now what you've noticed you'll notice is this is open and that's not. To have a, a face be open, you have to have that face added to this list here. So I'm going to select the face and click Add Face. Oops, so this one does it the other way. So now you'll see that face is open. So that's how we're going to create the, all the pipes. Um, for the sake of speed, I'm just going to copy in the other pipes from my other model. So I'll do that and come back. So I have all the other pipes selected and I oriented them a little bit different in my original model. So the next one we want to add is the, the leech pipe. And so I left that one out because it's just a little bit different than the other ones. It has the... Uh, or it's supposed to have. <laughs> it's supposed to have the, the linear pattern with the holes in it. So you can see them there. So I'm gonna cr copy the model in up to the pocket because you already know, or up to the thickness, I'm sorry. Um, Cause you already know how to do that and then we'll add the pocket. So let's, let me copy that in and we'll resume. So to complete the leech pipe, um, there's not a whole lot more than what we did. So all I simply did was um, I created a sketch and it's uh, just on the uh, base ZY plane. And you'll see that the uh, pocket um, intersects the pipe in, in that fashion. So that's, that's an advantage of having a parts pile is because this pipe can sit um, on, on the axis and it's easier to do things like this. If this was out in space, then you'd have to, you know, you'd have to get this aligned correctly somehow. Um, and then, so I pocketed that and I just did a through all. So that'll go in, that goes in both directions. Um, or I did through all and I think I also did mid plane. Yeah, so you have to do mid plane so, that the, so it goes both ways. Um, and then I find, after that I did a linear pattern and you'll see that I just, I just did enough to have a hole at every six inches or so and uh, all the way up to the end of the pipe. If you try to do much more than that, um, it may bring your free CAD it might slow your free CAD down quite a bit. So at this point, I copied all the parts into an assembly. So they have all their uh, a clone representation. I use the draft clone and not the parts design clone. The reason is, is the draft clone 
uh, copies the name, whereas the part design workbench clone does not. So that's why I use the uh, that's why I use the draft clone. So it does that. I just not don't like it now. So it makes it as a base feature, and there's probably a reason for that that gives you other advantages. But um, I haven't needed it for this, so I didn't use it. So once I have my parts pile, I'm going to select all the items inside the parts pile, and I'm just going to hit clone, and that'll create a clone of each one of those. And then we're going to create it. We're going to create a group. Now let's see if they're pre-selected. Does it? Nope. But you can create a group and leave them selected. That's useful. So now we'll call this the assembly. So once I have all my clones in the assembly, I'm going to hide the parts pile. And for some reason, the first time you click it, it doesn't hide it. And the second time it does. And then it's like they have to get into sync, their visibility. So with my assembly, now I'm going to start moving this stuff around to, um, <clears throat> to position it where I need it. So for So that gives us an approximation of our model and, and should give you all the tools you need. So if you need to change the size of any of these pipes, you can just simply go into the part pile. You don't even have to, um, to show them and then go into the sketch that you need. So this one is, uh, this is the length. So you can see that it's got three lengths of the inlet pipe. Oh, and I even named that one. So inlet length. And then, so I, so let's see if, uh, so I've got a, oh, that's 25 feet. <laughs> and this is uh, two in, two feet. So let's change this to four feet. Say for some reason, that's what we wanna do. And you can see this pipe changed. So the clone is connected to its, its, uh, its related part. You could also even add these to a spreadsheet um, so that all the, all the details are in one place. Um, and perhaps if you wanted to, you could add you know a pitch to the pipes in the spreadsheet and um, I do have some videos on working with spreadsheets if you look through my channel you should be able to find them but I uh, I hope this was uh, useful and I hope you learned how to do a sweep and a thickness and um, if you like my videos make sure you subscribe and click on the alarm bell and of course make sure you have a great day